Okay, guys, <clears throat> here we are back on uh, Wind Chaser. Uh, we have our kitty rental hooked up to the uh, 2720 disc ripper. So we'll just go ahead and uh, keep plowing away. Uh, finished up all of our disking, came out to like. Uh, we average about 58 acres per hour with the uh, 2623 and uh, this cat challenger and uh, that's just going off of total operation time and the amount of acres we cultivated so that includes road, road time and uh, headland uh, turnaround time and stuff like that so but I mean we don't spend that many hours on the road we probably only spent um, maybe a total of 20 minutes driving up and down the road so doesn't uh, skew our data too much I'll turn that up because I don't really care. And I turn on our interior lighting. Actually, I'll turn. See the uh, lights at the beat piling facilities? I wouldn't mind having a uh, 13 shank 875. Uh, but eventually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a 2730. And that should um, look incredible, actually, being uh, pulled behind this. I, I do like the 2720, uh, but it's just kind of, I don't know, reminds me of a, uh, not a very uh, aggressive primary tillage tool such as like the 875-13 shank or a uh, cross dominator. And especially the new 2730, the new 2730 just looks like a, uh, a uh, <laughs> like that thing is a tank. It's like designed to go into into war and come back with unfazed. So um, 2720, I feel like the little uh, doesn't have enough weight uh, weight to it. And when you compare it to the specs with the 2730, it definitely it's like uh, 100 or 150 pounds lighter per per uh, shank, I think, or something like that. The down pressure, so. Definitely a light, light, uh, light uh, a lighter uh, chisel plow than that massive 2730. Got the trains going by as well. Now I guess Mike actually finished this field, but uh, it didn't save. Anyways, we have this cat. Uh, for another 10 hours, so we'll be able to knock out quite a bit of our primary tillage with this high horsepower tractor. Uh, we just have a pair of uh, 450s right now, and uh, open this up. We're at a solid 10. Bump that up to 12. Uh, so we're significantly faster than our 450. I was actually thinking of being a T97 because that has quite a has a little bit more horsepower than this Cat Challenger. Uh, so we're doing about eight. 8.3, it's specced at probably 8.5 meter working with, but uh, we're doing about 8.3 um, meters per pass. A little bit of overlap. Pretty fun tool to. Uh, actually compared to what else is available K 
plan on redoing um, uh, the frame on this as well, updating the frame and redoing uh, new textures and new discs and stuff like that since I, uh, it's 26-23, but it's just a matter of when I can actually find time to, to do all these things I want to do is one thing. I do like this way that this disc is designed to raise and lower. Um, I think it's a pretty interesting way of, you know, engineering. Um, pretty simple. Uh, compared to the uh, 2623, I feel like the 2623 is a little bit more stressed on some of the components and how it raises and lowers the, um, the whole implement. It's really relying on one little swiveling uh, beam um, of uh, square tubing, and I feel like if something was going to go, that would be the, the location that would go on it, but uh, it must, uh, must be able to hold up, because imagine not a lot of people are having that component fail. So I'm kind of curious how many acres people actually put on their chisel plows till they uh, trade it in and get a new one because um, Going back to uh, Wisconsin, I see a lot of lot of uh, old uh, tillage equipment that um, farmers are still using. I mean, they're probably using 15, 20 year old at least uh, offset discs. And, um, then again, I mean, they're not pulling them with these new high, you know, 600 horsepower tractors either. So I imagine if you're pulling you have uh, one of those big tractors you want to have the implement you know a big beefy implement as you can that can handle uh, that kind of uh, horsepower and torque but from what i've seen a lot of the farmers uh, albeit they're dairy farmers for the most part i'd say 90 percent of them um, they all use pretty old old uh, tillage tech so and i imagine if one of these like discs or shanks goes down you just uh, replace it it's not like the frame and stuff goes down but I'm kind of curious like at what point do you replace hydraulic hoses what point at what point do you replace couplers uh, tires I imagine if you're storing it outside tires will go go bad uh, sooner than if it's inside storage same with hoses but um, it's not like a uh, a plant or something that comp complicated or a combine that there's so much, so many moving components and so many electrical sensors and stuff like that that I feel like a disc or any kind of tillage, piece of tillage equipment is pretty easy to maintain and pretty cheap to maintain too. Imagine though, if you're out in the field and you break a shank or something like that, that must be such a pain. Cause it's not like you're gonna drive your tractor back to the shop. You're probably gonna bring a truck out there with your parts and do all the repairs right in the field. Which I don't know. I feel like that would get annoying after a while. Hopefully that doesn't happen to too many of the actual farmers out there. But doing your uh, winter maintenance, have a solid winter maintenance schedule.
is actually pretty enjoyable. We're uh, about five o'clock in the morning. Um, we are about six, about 650 acres in, maybe 700 acres into our tillage. Um, so we have about, uh, uh, what do we have? We have like 500 acres more to go of uh, primary uh, chisel plow, so um, we're making uh, quite a bit of progress, but still uh, a long ways to go. Uh, we have uh, four more days till uh, soil mod updates, which it would pretty much negate us putting all of our uh, nutrients down before we till it in. So that's one thing, like, after you're done harvesting and you want to start doing uh, pre-tillage uh, nutrient application, um, make sure you, up, you, you, you update soil mod to the next grow stage, because if you, um, let's say, like on this map, soil mod updates every five days, that's just how I have it set. Um, but if it takes you two and a half days to do do your harvest and it probably takes you another two days to do to do uh, your nutrient application that leaves you a day and a half to do all of your tillage which is you know you're gonna run out of time no matter what you're what you're using so that's just something to uh, keep in mind when you're thinking about pulling the trigger on your nutrients and stuff like that So it's finally a little bit light out now that we can get away with uh, turning off our posterior light there and uh, turning on our cab light. Cab light could be adjusted a little bit on this, but you can see the light on that white barn way off in the distance. Pretty cool. See that whole light? That's a nice thing about uh, FS15. Pretty much the main reason I didn't go back to 13 because 13 still has MR and I'm still eagerly waiting for um, a more comprehensive MR to come out. Um, hopefully the next version of the game there's actually a differential between cleaning areas on combines. But um, in 13 it was like literally impossible to have any kind of lighting on a map because the light, I don't know what they did but they changed it and they changed it for the better uh, shocker. But uh, lights don't really like your game anymore. Maybe initially when you turn it on but then when everything kind of like compiles and caches itself. It's, uh, I mean, I got, I got, I can see lights a uh, thousand, thousand meters away. And it doesn't uh, affect the game performance uh, one bit. So that's, that's probably the main reason I didn't go back to uh, 13. It's because I do love my lights. I'm sure everyone else does this too. So um, this is a uh, pretty productive field. I really, really enjoy uh, farming this field and so do the other guys. It's uh, nice and parallel on both sides. Really friendly for a GPS operation. Um, really, really goes quick with two combines on drapers. Um, goes goes pretty quick with just about everything, really. Um, but uh, this and 17 as well. 17, you know, another one of our uh, favorite fields. 29 will be interesting, and now that you get a pretty good idea of how big 29 is when you're over here in uh, 18, it's deceivingly big. Yet, uh, I mean, there's a lot of acres tucked away in those that odd-shaped field, um, so it's deceivingly big. Yet, uh, that will be an interesting field to harvest as well, because I don't really think we're too sure how we're gonna how we're gonna tackle that. Even planting will be interesting. But
can see the light in the Conagra uh, unload shed, so pretty cool. Two more passes. Looks like they finished field three as well, so that's nice. Supposed to have a uh, patient this morning, um, but uh, patient uh, forgot, or so they say. Um, so it was a failed appointment. Anyways, uh, kind of an interesting case. It's a uh, fixed uh, cast. It's a uh, cast partial on the upper, and um, it's uh, two lower implants, uh, uh, crowned uh, retained implants on the lower. It was actually transferred to me, um, and uh, when the casts are mounted on the articulator, the occlusion, it's not even an inclusion because what they did is after they made the uh, cast for the uh, chromium cobalt framework to be uh, poured and uh, cast, I don't even think it was centered, I think it was actually a cast, it uh, was cast chromium, uh, chromium cobalt. Um, they did uh, two additional crowns after they made the framework and the crowns are not reflected on the cast that is uh, has the metal framework on it that I'm trying to do the uh, upper partial. And basically for those of you that know nothing about dentistry, this is about as half-assed of uh, work as you can possibly go. I mean, um, you think some of the hack jobs that go on in farm sim are bad? No, 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 no. no. This is uh, this is uh, not this is this is not only not clinically acceptable um, in private practice. This would uh, be littered against this malpractice. Um, so this is very, very, very hodgepodge dentistry. This other person was doing, and so it's uh, my job to basically put this framework in a patient's mouth, take a pickup impression, re-pour it. Make sure all class and uh, rest seats are uh, fully seated. All rest and abutments are fully seated. And then do another Facebook capture and remount. And then make sure that uh, with a bite registration that everything's in proper occlusion. Because literally, like, if you were to send this to the lab, this lab technician, you know, the technician that you send your prescriptions to, yeah, uh, they, they would literally just, like, probably call you or email you and be like, what do you actually want me to do with this? Like, you send me something that isn't even usable, really. And, uh, so it's kind of frustrating that the uh, patient didn't show up because there's a lot that I want to get done today. Uh, a lot that needs to be done. I mean, if a person wants their teeth, they should really show up. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of disappointing when you see uh, your your future colleagues that are already, you know, out in practice, you, you, you're taking over their case from their patients, and it's it's literally like not even um, clinic, clinically acceptable work, and um, basically if you were to go against the board, they would probably get um, a pretty stiff, stiff uh, ruling against them. They would probably either get a pretty hefty fine or maybe even a suspension of their licensure, so... Um, not all doctors are treated equal, and not everyone is as passionate about their work. You know, some people just view it as the job, and they're just there for the paycheck, and they don't really care uh, about their patient's well-being, which is kind of, um, in a fiduciary relationship, which um, all relationships with your, your dentist or your primary care physician or, you know, whatever your surgeon, it's all a fiduciary relationship, and you're relying on the doctor to um, be the expert. And, you know, you as a, a, a layperson, 
you know, a non-knowledgeable professional, of the, a non-medical professional, you um, really have no idea what's actually going on. Um, so it's just really kind of sad to see that uh, firsthand. And, uh, but honestly, uh, what can you do? That's in every in every field. So before I start seventeen, I'm gonna consult the oracle that is the spreadsheet so i'm pretty sure they finished this which is awesome i was wondering how many hours got on that kitty that was like three additional hours then 18 is okay then we're gonna move on to 17. <laughs> Turn off my lights on it too. Uh, so this field has corn residue, and then it has what else does it have? It has like NPK. I'll see what it has actually, so I don't have to guess. It just has nitrogen. Maybe should have put down. No, it's a little pH is a little high for lime to plow in the lime, so we'll probably broadcast some lime after uh, done chisel plowing. So this was corn last time, now it's going to be canola. Total cost that we're putting in this field, about 29000 Field 18 is also going to be canola, we only put in 11000 44 south, if you're looking at about 47000 in field 44s. So we're putting in quite a bit of money into these fields, but um, we're also getting pretty, pretty uh, damn good yields out of them too. So. Uh, we're definitely making money. Uh, we're all working pretty hard. I'm not putting in as many hours as the other guys, obviously, but um, getting stuff done. I'll probably just do a headland. Two headlands and then call it a day on this field and hopefully someone else can come on and finish it up. Maybe uh, we can get two uh, chisel paws going. Someone commented on the other video if I was figured out a way to do uh, 
compaction. No, I was suggesting that it would be a great feature of soil mod if compaction was um, part of it. I'm actually going to create a new field edge over here just because. spots that aren't actually field texture. views over here. Just about. Not quite. So this field seventeen is thirty three point three four hectares. Oh, they didn't finish the uh, north section, though.
this. I think I will uh, call it a day on the video. So thanks for watching.